Alex Garland thinks that all you have to do is show Americans fighting with each other to show how bad a hypothetical civil war could be. If just watching that made it clear that war is bad, we need to avoid it at all costs, wouldn't we be the very next day on the streets together marching and singing Kumbaya the entire time? I want Civil War to be a good movie. I have ridiculously low hopes based on everything I've seen thus far, but I hope I'm wrong. I want a movie that says the culture war is wrong and we all need to work together to be a good movie. Civil War isn't the worst movie of 2024 so far, but it's the one that's pissed me off the most. It is the worst script I've ever seen from an A24 movie. And before I rip it apart, let's talk about the stuff I liked. As a war movie with a massive scale, realistic tone, and brutal gory violence, I'm sure this canon will deliver, especially on IMAX with this being A24's new most expensive movie ever made. I doubt it'll top their original most expensive movie, but that's a personal preference. The dystopian atmosphere that Alex Garland visually portrays on screen is easily the star of the show. This has gorgeous cinematography of these iconic cities being completely vast, empty, and abandoned, all of these highways with cars just parked on the road completely demolished with a sign that even says mines ahead like it was actually prepared to be a war zone. And one of the few uplifting scenes where the journalists go to this refugee camp and the camp is basically just a bunch of tents and trailers in a football stadium. And just the imagery alone conveys a sense of tension and uneasiness like you're actually in the environment with these characters. The use of handheld camera work and Oscar worthy sound design are put to great effect, especially on IMAX during the very few battle sequences that we actually get. The one aspect I actually respect about this movie is how it portrays war journalists in the middle of a battle zone. It emphasizes the physical dangers and risks these characters are undertaking to do their jobs, to inform us as best as they possibly can. And even though it's emotionally scarring, they're forced to take pictures of people that they honestly feel guilty for not having to prevent their death, prevent their injury, to do a hell of a lot more. They would march into an even worse battlefield the next day within an instant just for dedication to their craft. Say whatever you will about political commentators who sit behind a desk and do fuck all, but the ones who are actually out in the field putting their lives on the line for the truth? I respect the hell out of that, and so does this movie. And of all the battle sequences that we see in this movie, which surprisingly aren't that many for a movie called Civil War, the climax in Washington DC is the one where you feel like you're actually in a war zone, where choppers are just firing on landmark after landmark, tanks are firing in all directions, secret service cars are just crashing on the streets, and whatever corner these soldiers and journalists are venturing, there is someone waiting to strike and try and kill them. I'm sure the actors in this are all gonna give good performances. I mean, Kirsten Dunst, Wagner Mora, Stephen McKinley Henderson, Jesse Plemons. Kirsten Dunst and Kaylee Spaney, if that's how you actually say her name, have an overall good enough rapport and are really the only characters in this that have any chemistry or backstory, even though it's mostly just them sitting around delivering exposition about their past, which ironically don't explain why they wanted to become journalists in the first place. And that's really the worst thing about this script. You don't know a fucking thing about any of these characters. These talented actors are just wasted with the most generic character tropes. Kirsten Dunst is the typical cynical hero who is looking for something more uplifting to reinvigorate herself in her life. And of course, it's this mentorship with this young girl. It's a great idea, and it would mean a hell of a lot more if Kirsten Dunst had more than one emotion in this film. And I get the point behind that. She's supposed to be so jaded and feels guilty and traumatized by her experiences that she looks like she has insomnia, or at least that's how it's supposed to play out. But Dunst's face the entire time looks more like a woman whose baby has been keeping her up all week. Wagner Mora's most memorable feature about his character is that he's the typical adrenaline junkie who like gets a rush out of how dangerous his job is until someone he loves dies and then all of a sudden he becomes more cynical and serious than Dunst. It's never explained why or how losing friends in the past never faced him that much beforehand. He had absolutely nothing to do. Same with Stephen McKinley Henderson. He's just your typical wise old mentor who spews out cookie cutter movie monologues for his protégés. I'm blown away by how underutilized he was. And as for the Jesse Plemons scene, it wasn't anywhere as corny or over the top as I thought it would be. And it is necessary to understand at least one ideology in this war, but 
he's introduced in such a plot convenient way where honestly in the script these characters could have avoided him but in the middle of a civil war driving down this one road where danger lurks from any corner these professional journalists decide for fun to do a jackass stunt I'm not even kidding. And aside from the fact that most of Plemons' dialogue is just repeating certain lines that other characters said before him. Please, sir, we're journalists. Journalists? What kind of journalists? Just journalists on our way to DC. DC? What's in DC? To meet with the president. Can you seriously stop talking like that? Talking like that? Talking like what? No, seriously, did we know that you're married to the star of this movie? You really don't have to prove that without your phoning it. <laughs> He was a commie. This entire scene was so utterly predictable and ended in such an unintentionally funny way without a couple of them died. Ron Swanson as the president I have a really hard time buying, which is really saying something at this point. President Ron Swanson just announced today that Traeger turkey burgers are now illegal. But like Christopher Walken as the emperor, it'll depend on how long he's in the movie and what he actually does during his screen time. He's in the first scene and the last scene only. We never learned his name, what political party, what ideology he was a part of, why he committed war crimes on American citizens, whether he thought he was doing something for the greater good or if he knew that he was evil. All we know is that he's evil. Real complex shit there. Almost all my issues lie with Alex Garland as a filmmaker. I find him extremely pretentious and pseudo-intellectual without a shred of subtlety in regards to the philosophical themes in his movie or really just anything symbolic that he throws in there. I mean, for God's sake, I already know going in, there's going to be a terrorist attack on the 4th of July. It is symbolic of our struggle against oppression. The one movie he directed that I enjoyed, and remember, directed. Movies he's only written, he has a much better track record of, but the one movie he directed that I liked, the things he had to say in that a million people had already said before, they just weren't trying to meme themselves. Why was that funny in the first place? And it doesn't help that every movie that centers around the culture war these days, no matter what side the movie was made from, always comes across as, uh, what's the word? One-sided, full of shit, hypocritical. No matter whether a conservative or a liberal filmmaker makes a movie about these issues, the moral of the story is, our movie is 100% right about everything, and so are we. If you disagree with us slightly, you are on the wrong team. It's never true, and it's always fucking pathetic. Liberals have good ideas, conservatives have good ideas. Liberals have bad ideas, conservatives have bad ideas. How fucking hard is that to understand? And if by some miracle Garland succeeds at conveying the messages that ideological differences don't matter and we could still get along, trust me, if he gets that stuff right, you will be the first to know. But I'm not convinced that he's going to do that because the early reviews that I've seen have already mentioned that this doesn't really take a side in the culture war, which on the one hand, that's a good thing, but it also doesn't explain which ideologies are on either sides of the people fighting, which I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is it's not enough to say us going to war with each other over political differences is wrong. We all fucking know that unless you have blue brain cells. The other reason I don't think that works is because if you show the hypothetical of this is what the bickering and fighting between each other is going to lead to, both sides are going to look at the other and say, it's their fault. No, it's their fault. No, it's their fault. No, it's their fault. Da, 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 da. They'll always find some excuse to say, we're not the ones at fault. We need to know why people disagree with each other, where ideological differences come from. What's the difference between hating ideas and hating people? That is how we come to an understanding. That is how we start conversations that lead to friendships with those we disagree with. And I'm really hoping that in between the violence and bloodshed in this movie and the philosophical jargon, there can actually be characters sitting down, sharing their political opinions, their life-changing experiences that have made them reconsider the world. Alex Garland thinks that all you have to do is show Americans fighting with each other to show how bad a hypothetical civil war could be, which is weird because we've been seeing action after action of a possible civil war between Americans fighting each other for almost a decade at this point. If watching footage from Charlottesville, the George Floyd riots, January 6th, if just watching that made it clear that war is bad, we need to avoid it at all costs, wouldn't we be the very next day on the streets together marching and singing Kumbaya the entire time? Like, showing a war is only doing 
half the work. You need to explain whose sides are fighting and why. We know next to no ideologies or political agendas or mission statements out of all the people who are fighting in this, and there are at least four different groups fighting in the Civil War. The one political ideology in this that's actually expressed comes from Jesse Plemons, who of course is your typical red form and nationalist, where as long as you're American, white, black, brown, doesn't matter. As long as you're American, you're cool. You can be white as me, but Canadian, and your ass is grass. Because, you know, only right-wingers are capable of political violence. Oh, wait, that's not true. Right-wingers and left-wingers are equally capable of violence, property destruction, theft, threatening, hate crimes, the list goes on. This is exactly why I hate the fact that Garland chose not to actually examine the strengths and weaknesses of political ideologies. Like Sigourney Weaver said in The Defenders, it's not a good war unless both sides believe that they're right. We need to understand why both sides of a fight believe they're good and the other is evil. That's how you can start a conversation, a debate with them, poke holes in their arguments, discover the two things among others that both sides would actually have in common so that you can make a peaceful resolution. Isn't it more important to explain how wars start, how to prevent them or how to solve them as opposed to just saying war is bad? The soundtrack did not match at all the tone of whatever was going on once a song started. And in a weird way, you can kind of get the sense that that was actually on purpose because Watch this reenactment and tell me that this shot and this song match up. And look, obviously that's the intention because, you know, they're so nonchalant about the fact that people are dying, but there are other times where you can tell that that's clearly not what they were going for. And lastly, for a movie called Civil War, we really don't see that much of the Civil War. There are a lot of shots that are just shots being fired in the background or the fiery explosive destruction afterwards, but we don't want to see two-on-one shootouts. We want to see people on battlefields just going full-blown bonkers with their beliefs. So that, again, we know why it's wrong. Movies like The Hunt, The Last Supper, and Demolition Man took the time to explain how culture shifts work how it can escalate into war, and how to prevent it. And if Alex Garland took that route with this script, Civil War would be as profound as he seems to think it is. <sighs> Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you have seen Civil War, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Be sure to stay tuned for more reviews. Be sure to like, subscribe, check me out on Patreon, and buy me a coffee. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Take care.